Hey, if you're an actor at the start of your career, or if you're an actor who hasn't started at all, no judgment. But I do want you to know that it has never been a better time to get started with Backstage. Just go to backstage.com slash subscribe and enter the code word envelope at checkout for a 30-day free trial. That's 30 whole days. You can browse through thousands of casting notices from thousands of filmmakers, producers, casting directors, all looking for talent just like you. Make a profile, upload a headshot, find out what kind of projects you want to be a part of. Backstage is where you book that very first role. It's also where you book that second role and then that third role and then you keep booking roles all the way up until you win that Oscar. And then you can come join me here on In the Envelope. We love a full circle moment here at Backstage. But first, you gotta subscribe. And again, that's 30 days free if you use the code word envelope at checkout. E-N-V-E-L-O-P-E, envelope, 30 days free. Get those roles. And I'll see you back here when I interview you when you win an Oscar. Cannot wait. Welcome to In The Envelope, a podcast from Backstage, the one-stop shop for actors and creators both above and below the line. I am your host, Vinny Mancuso, Backstage Senior Editor and Professional Entertainment Obsessive. I'll be your guide through every corner of the creative industry with the help of some of your favorite stars. Here you'll find intimate, in-depth talks with today's most award-worthy names in film, television, and theater. Along the way, we'll get advice on living your best creative life, relatable stories of the highest highs and lowest lows, and maybe, just maybe, a rare peak in the envelope. fascinating though when you have two shows in a day they're always so different and you can never predict it like some days I go on and I'm like I might be so tired and then as soon as I get on stage it's just like there's a surge of energy and then sometimes you might go on feeling ready and then things just kind of don't go as you (laughs) you kind of envisioned or planned in your head it's very unpredictable welcome to another episode of in the envelope the actors podcast I am your host Backstage Senior Editor, Vinny Mancuso, and joining me today is a brand new, hot off the presses, Tony Award nominee, Jodi Comer. Now, you most likely know Jodi from her Emmy and BAFTA winning role on The Great, Great Killing Eve, or even from the Ryan Reynolds flick, Free Guy, or even Ridley Scott's The Last Duel, but she is now also Tony nominated thanks to her stage debut which also happens to be a one-woman show. She did not make it easy on herself, and that is Prima Facey. It is a remarkable play that debuted on the West End uh, back in 2022 and made its way over to Broadway earlier this year. Uh, Comer plays a barrister who often represents the defendant in sexual assault cases, but finds her entire belief system upended when she experiences an assault of her own. Um, I saw this show last week at the Golden Theater and left just absolutely absolutely stunned it is an hour 40 minutes and jody does not leave the stage she does not stop uh she shifts the entire time between every emotion you can imagine across the spectrum at the snap of a finger it is truly truly a sight to behold um so apologies in advance the bulk of this episode is just me trying to get to the bottom of how someone can possibly possibly do that And if you've ever been even a little interested in what it takes uh, personally, professionally, physically, spiritually to carry a Broadway show on your back, uh, this is definitely the episode for you. And uh, if you also believe that way more people should have seen The Last Duel, this is definitely the episode for you. Uh, Let's get right into it. Here is Jodi Comer. Jody, how's it going? It's so, so, so wonderful to meet you. It's so lovely to meet you. Um, congrats. First of all, right off the bat, congrats on the Tony Nom. Uh, how is this? It's been a week, weekish, since since Tony Noms came out. Yeah. Has it been a week? I, I think it was last Tuesday. Is today Tuesday? The the time gets away from us. I have no concept of time. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's um 
I take it show by show is, <laughs> is how I'm kind of taking time at the minute. No, it's been amazing. You know, it was, um, just feels like a continuous whirlwind. You know, we'd, we'd only been open a week last week when the nominations came through. And so, you know, we have like another nine weeks still, still to go of the run. So it, it, you know, it feels like I can't really take my eye off the ball in that sense, but such an honor, you know, to be kind of recognized in that way. Yeah, I was gonna. I was gonna say. I have to imagine, it's so much different from any other awards recognition because you 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 wake up that morning, you get the nomination, you have to absorb it, and then you go do the show. Like, it, it, what is that like? You know, is it yeah. is, is it kind of just have to wash over you, and you're like, okay, I'll I'll think about that later. I think so. I think that's exactly it because I I had that thought myself last week. I thought, oh, this is different in a sense of usually you've kind of maybe finished a project months prior, you know, and it's like, you know, six months later or however many months later that a nomination may come through where this is very, this is right in the midst of it all. Um, so I think it is exactly that, you know, it's like, is to take it on and, and be grateful, but ultimately like what, what I really have to focus on now is, is the show and making sure that the audiences are coming and, and enjoying, well, I can't really dictate whether they enjoy it or not, but you know, as long as I'm giving all that I can to what I'm doing, then then that's all that matters. Do you think that show, the nomination show, had a bit of an extra oomph to it? Just sort of the, 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 the day of the nominations, you go into that show, was it, did it have, did it feel at all different? <laughs> it was a, or, it was a great show, actually. It was a really good show on the, um, it was a really good show on the Tuesday. Maybe it did. Maybe there was something um, kind of <laughs> celebratory in the air. But you can never, you, you can just never, because usually Tuesdays I find really nerve wracking. Tuesdays I get really nervous about because there's something about having one day off. <laughs> like, that. Like I don't know, there's something about the one day that makes me go, oh my God, you know, it's been a day since we've done this. And and then I get more nervous, whereas last Tuesday was it was really great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I I do want to say for the record, we are recording this on a Tuesday, so I hope that tonight yeah. goes, goes <laughs> yeah. wonderfully. Thank you. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm so excited to talk to you about this show because um, part of the joy of doing this podcast is I learn so much about acting, and it's 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 something that I I come from from a place of genuine awe. I'm I, I often ask myself, how did they do that? And I learn so much about how people do things. But I walked out of this show mm. legitimately. I don't know how you do that. I don't, I, I, from every beginning to end, it is such a awe-inspiring thing that you do, uh, all hours, hour 40 minutes of it. Um, so I'm excited to just sort of ask, you know, mm. how do you do that? How is, <laughs> what is the, uh, what is the, the, let's start from there and then we'll work our way inward. How do I do it? <laughs> I mean, it's like, I knew when I took on this role, I didn't know how I was going to do it, truth be told. And I think that was what a huge draw was, was that I read this script, which I was completely, I get like you, in awe of. And I thought, how will I ever execute this? Like, And I was really interested in that journey of like, how do I get from where I am now to having no idea how I'm going to do it and struggling to imagine it to like performing that eight, eight, nights a week. I have an incredible team of people around me, you know, a, a team of people who I feel like probably believed in me in moments, um, you know, saw things in me that I didn't necessarily see in myself at first. You know, when I started this process in London last year, you know, I'd only been in a rehearsal room once before when I was like 16. So that felt very new to me. And I remember Justin being very clear about, you know, on the first day, we're going to get up on our feet. And I was taking everything very literally. Like, so if it says she sits down or she grabs a folder, like I would do it. And he's like, no, 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 it's, <laughs> this is theater. Like we can, we can be creative. We don't have to be so literal. And I was just felt like I was really learning from scratch and was so encouraged and nurtured and, um, with not being to drama school, I, I, you know, there was a lot that I thought I didn't know in a sense of, you know, how to use your voice, movement on stage, just being aware of your physicality and your body in a way that, which I feel like on camera, you don't have to think about so much because the camera is most often, you know, kind of up in the close up and seeing what the face is doing. 
I don't know if that answers your question of how I do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I don't. I don't know if I, we would probably have to sit here for about uh, four yeah. hours to cover that one question. Yeah. But I, I am curious about you know when you when you get this you, you, well before Broadway when you first get this yeah. this script. What is the um for you the literal first step? Like what is what what was the first thing you did as a way to sort of you know you you had to create something from a block of marble. Mm. What did you first? What was your first chisel? Oh, it's a good question. I'm trying to remember now. <laughs> it's a while ago at this point, yeah. yeah. I feel like for me, there was something about Tessa's intelligence and confidence that felt very inspiring and kind of foreign to me. I don't know, there was something about the the, the kind of whip smart um 10 tracks at once and just this kind of um sense of authority and power that she felt within herself that I felt like I was having to reach for a little bit more you know I felt like I knew the Tessa at home with her family and and that kind of sense of who she was but this other part of her I felt like I needed to almost embrace that side of myself to find her um but I feel like the biggest thing which is a very practical thing was um just getting started with the material <laughs> because i was <laughs> like you know i may have got this wrong but you know i feel like the script that i got was like 90 or so pages and I, it was just really kind of sitting with the material and trying to get that into my body um because you know i'd, I'd said yes to doing it in 2019 and then you know it was the height of covid so it had been pushed a little while and then we were starting rehearsals in the March, April. And I remember sitting down with the script in like the November before. And so by the time I got to the rehearsal room, I was mainly off book. So I remember that being my first thing. I was so fearful of forgetting my lines. And that's what I've realized now coming back is like, because the material is kind of has seeped into me more deeply. I can spend less time worrying about <laughs> maybe possibly forgetting all of my lines, you know, which is nice. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's I, we were discussing the show after we left, and I, 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 the thing I was stuck on is imagining somebody handing me a play and saying, "Memorize this," and it's like, "Memorize what?" And like the whole thing <laughs> the, right. from beginning to end. And I don't, and it's funny because I don't want to. Um, it almost feels like doing it a disservice to 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 say, "Oh, acting is just memorizing," yeah. but there is the the logistical aspect of it. Mm. Um, so at what point did the two things start to merge for you? Was it, okay, I, I'm not just memorizing. I'm now, I'm, I'm now saying the words and finding the truth of them truth in the moment. It. Yeah. Yeah. It's, well, it, it's interesting because I feel like I'm finding so much more truth this time round within my own experience of playing her for that very reason of the, the dialogue is just, um, kind of ingrained in me in a, in a different way. What I found fascinating was, which Justin Martin, our director, had kind of told me about prior, because because I knew when we started in London, I knew the majority of the script, but then as soon as we started moving in the room, I was having to reach for the script because I was forgetting the lines. And he said that is uh, a very common and um, normal thing of like when you start putting movement to it, you know, you have to kind of, connect the two and I feel like that is definitely a thing now of just like muscle memory and as I'm moving around the stage you know in that kind of fluidity it's like it, it is all just kind of connected to one another and I think again like because my body knows and understands what it is that I'm saying I'm allowed I feel like this time I'm kind of able to surrender to it a little bit more mm -hmm. which is a really nice feeling. Is, is, is it almost at a point where the dialogue is second is, is, is it almost like the movement is is the first thing on your mind or not it's 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 tough to put into actual words what is what is at the top of mind in any any given moment on stage oh my god <laughs> i know that's that is always a, a a tough thing to put into words for anyone that does stage acting there's it's so like... many things going on in my mind <laughs> it's like there's like the truth of it then there's like and then there might be like oh i got that line wrong and then it's like oh this person's on their phone or like, <laughs> you know what i mean there's like sometimes there can be like 10 different things i think 
a big thing, you know, and what I'm so grateful for Justin for is like trying to be in the moment and find the discoveries because everything is told from her perspective. And so you don't want it to kind of be verbatim or, you know, you kind of want the audience to discover what she is discovering in within the same moment, you know, and I think I'm always trying to remember that of that makes it much more interesting for a viewer when they're finding out something at the exact same, same time that she is, you know, and I think so just trying to, um, as with every moment in acting, I feel like stay in the moment, but yeah, find the discoveries, I think is probably what I'm trying to kind of focus on. Yeah. Do you think that there's, I've seen you, and you even mentioned it just now, you know, you're, one of your first thoughts going to this was, you know, you didn't, you didn't have any theater training and it was, it was a big part of, you know, the decision to do it at first. Do you think that there's any way at all that that helped you, that, that, that your, that your inexperience, not inexperience, but you know, your lack of formal theatrical training and, and, and living in close ups and medium shots mostly. Yeah. Do you think there's any way that that helped you throughout this process? I think so. I think, I think so. I mean, it's, it's, you know, I didn't, I, cause I just went in with like an open heart and was like <laughs> so eager to please and um, do a good job. And like, I was just so determined, you know? So it wasn't like I had this kind of, these set of expectations or this rule book, whereas, you know, where of like, oh, well, this is right and this is wrong. You know, I was kind of learning throughout the process and on the spot, which I think did have certain advantages because I, I was just, I was just taking it for what it was. And I think, you know, I feel like I am very kind of intuitive and instinctive and I was able to really kind of lean into that and then um, have, you know, an amazing kind of voice coach who, you know, if there's certain things that weren't clear or I needed clarity and help with, like she was there on hand to help me. So I do think it had an, a, I don't know if it was an, I'd say an advantage, but um, it was definitely something I embraced. You know, I think I was in the past have been quite fearful of whether I'd be able to execute it, having not gone to drama school. And then when I was, you know, kind of, given the opportunity then it was just about like okay well now i ha now i'm making sure that that i can <laughs> you know what i mean there's no other there's no other option like i have to yeah. find a way the only way through is is out <laughs> the only way. yeah 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 uh, it's fascinating because there's there is that moment um in the show that almost feels like it is you have to do both which is 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 um tessa's being in, uh, interviewed at the police station and there is a, a close-up of you yeah uh projected on the stage but you're still performing to the to the you know the back seats as you have to mm. i'm curious about that balance where it's you know you now have to use everything in your toolbox the tv side the movie side the theatrical side yeah. was that moment for you um you know sort of a culmination of oh i have to use every skill that i have yeah, it, it it was. I mean, and and it's. I mean, just in a story sense, like I I love that moment for mm -hmm. what it represents in in regards to the interrogation and her feeling so exposed and, um. But yeah, it, it was always that moment of like, oh, okay, well, you know, I mean, there's never any faking any of it, but you know, this is mm -hmm. <laughs> this is going to be really kind of zoomed in on and um and and everyone can see, um. But yeah, I guess you just have to, like you said, you have to just kind of treat it the exact same in a sense of because you're face in the back, but ultimately need to make sure that everyone is kind of witness to it and, and feeling what she's feeling. Um, I don't know. It's a lot. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't I don't I don't I don't want to again. Mm -hmm. I never want to diminish what 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 happens on stage, but it is almost hard to describe because what happens on stage happens and then it's, it's it's you almost have to accept that that's what just happened on stage yeah, that's another thing with theater that i'm actually enjoying you know i, I remember the, the first preview we had was like euphoric like i don't i the only i only remember the last 10 minutes of it it was like someone was literally carrying me around the stage and then the second night i remember just thinking the whole way through just get to the end just get to the end because it was like i felt like i was pushing it you know, and it was so hard. And um, 
you know, and it's learning now to like every show is so different and it will be what it will be. And, and it's kind of throwing it over your shoulder and letting it go and, mm. and having the next opportunity the next evening or the next, you know, afternoon. Um, and I've really enjoyed embracing that. I think there's something really healthy about, about that kind of having to, yeah, embrace that mentality. I think it's good. That, that that sort of brings up something that I've always found so fascinating about Broadway in particular is is when you have two shows a day, um, mm. can you tell me about that liminal space <laughs> between between shows? Like what you have to you, you mentioned, you know, throwing it over your shoulder and accepting yeah. it. But when, but when the next one is facing you in two, three hours, mm. can you tell me what you go through <laughs> in those in those three hours? Well, I do. We all have a lunch together. We all sit and have lunch. And then I have a little room with blackout curtains, a weighted blanket, eye patches, and I <laughs> I peace out and I go, <laughs> and I go and have a um, like an hour nap. And then I get up, have my coffee, go on stage, warm back up, and I do that every time. Like that's and that's kind of what I did in London, and and kind of really work for me. I haven't ventured out yet. <laughs> some people like to like go out into the real world and get some fresh air, but I kind of just try and get my energy back up, you know, like just, I, and I think a little, a little nap always does help with that because it's all about energy really. And, um, and voice as well, you know, like I think just, just trying to rest enough so that you can go on later. And um, it's so fascinating though, when you have two, two shows in a day they're always so different you know what mm -hmm. i mean it's like they're so different and you can never predict it you can never ever predict it like there's some days i go on and i'm like you know I'm, i might be so tired and then as soon as i get on stage it's just like there's a surge of energy and then you know we kind of finish the show and we're like where did that come from you know or sometimes you might go on feeling ready and then things just kind of don't go as you <laughs> you kind of envisioned or planned in your head um, it's very unpredictable can you differentiate shows at this point? Like, can, like when you look back, or I don't know how often you look back, but you're like, oh, that that night is when this happened, or, or, or is it is it melded together at this point? I've been I've actually been trying to write down a lot more now. Like, so when I come home, I've been trying to like journal a little bit more because I, I realized I did it a tiny bit last year and I didn't commit to it, but I I always enjoyed reading back at certain moments that I'd forgotten, you know? So I've been trying to do that a little bit more just to look back on from, for myself. Um, but it's, it's always fascinating, you know, because I think sometimes like we, we, you can start a show and it could be very quiet in the audience and you think, Oh God, they're really quiet today. And then by the time you get to the end, there's a very different em emotional response because it's not like they've been, reserved it's just that they've been really intently listening you know what i mean and and so you just can't predict like and then sometimes you know they they'll be quite um vocal at the beginning and maybe laughing or responding and it's it's always so different and i think I, I, a big thing i remember you know james spearman our producer and justin saying to me was like just always do your show you know, if it, you know, because I think it can be intoxicating sometimes. You know, if you get an audience that are really responsive and really laughing, and you think, "Oh God, this is going," you know, "this is going great," and then you start playing into that, and then it, and then actually it throws you off for the second half with the emotion. You know, I'd have sometimes have moments like that where I'm like, "Oh, I didn't quite get to where I wanted to in the second half," but it, that might have been because I was leaning into something. In, at the beginning, you know, that wasn't actually true or right for me. But so it's all about just kind of playing your story and the audience will come to you in whatever way it is that they're feeling. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm curious how you've been finding the overall crowd response reaction, because this part of the power of this play is that when it does sort of switch tones, there is no handholding, there's no um, it, it like life, it just sort of happens. Happens, and there is absolutely no bridge. There's no, there's no preparing mm -hmm. the audience. It, in fact, I would say there's it even there's an overlap there where the, you're not sure how you're supposed to to feel. So I'm I'm curious how you've found the audience transition between the, for lack of a better word, both halves of the play. Mm. 
It's so powerful, I feel, because I think um, it's the beauty and the complexity of Susie's writing is that, you know, the moment before that shift is this moment where she's being sick and she's drunk and it's relatable and it's, you know, it's kind of icky and it's... there's it's a, a, a bit slapstick. Of, yeah, like yeah, there's yeah. a moment of like when you go, oh God, I've been there, I understand this feeling, like the smell of the toilet, you know, that all those kind of things, like the smell of the toilet bowl, like... Um, and then it's undercut, you know, by a very kind of sobering and dramatic moment. And I was always so struck by the silence in the theatre in that moment. Like, like you can't you could hear a pin drop you know and it, it almost feels like they are holding the audience are holding their breath with her and um, and i think that's um again i think that's also why people have such a strong can have such a strong reaction to the plays because i think they're not afforded any time and neither is tess you know and I think as a result of that, they really do go on this emotional journey with her. You know, she isn't afforded a moment to take a moment, digest, think. It's it's all happening to her. And I think that's what creates such a kind of intimate relationship with the audience is that they are there with her. And you're right, they don't have a choice not to be. And I think that's also the power in in her being in control of the narrative the whole way through. You know, it's like... It's always interesting because then you feel, you know, there's certain moments, I think, of lightheartedness or, you know, whether it's mum with her straw bag, you know, and you feel the relief in the audience when they go, oh, God, this, <laughs> you know, there's a little respite there to, you know, find a moment of lightness. And, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's really powerful, you know, because I think the audience members really kind of hold each other and there is a real kind of unspoken permission with people of, you know, you can hear sometimes people audibly crying or, you know, whatever it is that they're, they're feeling. And it's, yeah, it's really, really powerful. I, I'm curious about the, I, this, this is something as, as someone who's never been on stage, it's, it's always been sort of curious about, about that actor audience relationship, you know, what, wh how you use it, how you don't. Um, I, I know we've talked to a lot of people, you know, like the Broadway veterans who say, you know, they sometimes single someone out and they, they deliver that line to them or they, they find something without directly, you know, without breaking the fourth wall. But yeah. so I'm curious what your relationship is with, you know, that, that sort of actor audience divide and how you, you personally prefer to use it. Yeah, it's interesting because I feel like obviously with this, she's speaking to the audience the entire, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the entire time. So it's... Um, it, you know, it's very inclusive in that sense of like, she's having a conversation with them the whole way through. I have moments where I look at people, you know, especially when I think there's moments in the play where she's trying to really explain and get them to understand certain things. And she can be a bit jovial and a bit like, look, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? You know, and I think that there's a warmth to that that really brings people in, you know, and there are moments like that in the voir dire you know, where she is definitely, it's even more directed to the courtroom, which is the audience itself. And um, yeah, I never like knowing if, if like people who I know are in. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like sometimes I don't like looking too much just in case something does throw mm -hmm. me off. Like, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or, you know, if someone's doing like, if someone's doing something and I'm like, wait, what? Like, I, I, so um, yeah, I think it varies with, with each show, to be honest, but it's kind of unique experience in that sense, you know, and I, I really look forward to having a different experience of where I'm on stage with other actors and, you know, the, that relationship will be very different. And there is that, I mean, you, you just mentioned that there's that moment towards the end that's, that's so powerful where the, the house lights kind of come mm. up and you, and, and I'm I, I, I'd love to know how that changes being able to look people <laughs> directly in the yeah. eye has to change something with the material. So I'm, I'm curious how you've evolved with that moment where the house lights come up and you're, you're looking people in the eyes and they are. Well, it's so telling, you know, it's so, um, it really spares me on in a sense of just what the player is talking about. And when you can mm -hmm. see, you know, some people will be leaning in or hands over their mouths or, you know, it's like, or they're just really, 
listening, you know, or outraged or angry or like you, you can see what people are feeling for her and maybe for themselves or for the, for the society in which, in which we live in. And I love that. I thought it was so powerful when they said about bringing the house lights up because again, it, it just brings the audience in, in, in another way. It's really exposing, you know, I've, a lot of people who I've spoke to who've, who've watched it have said when those lights come up, you mm-hmm. know, it's, it's, it gives you chills in a sense because it reminds you that what we're talking about is what a reality, you know, again, I kind of have, I have points on, on where the lights are for, for characters, for focus. So a lot of that I'm kind of, I'm, I'm aiming to with the judge and, and the barristers, but you know, it does kind of feel like a rally cry that moment. And it, it is amazing to be able to like, l- to really look at people in that moment. I remember when we shot the NT live, they had to bring them up more for the sake of the cameras. And that was a lot like that. <laughs> like at the all moment, right, they're like, oh, like I can see people's faces, but in London for the NT live, it was like really up. And I was like, I don't know if I can. <laughs> Let's maybe dial it back a little yeah. bit. <laughs> um, but it's great. It's so powerful, you know? And I think it's again, so brilliant about the team and, and, just then, you know, to have these kind of ideas of, I think it makes it really, really immersive. Yeah, I, I, I was gonna say that when I saw it last last Thursday, um, mm-hmm. it was almost with the material, almost even more moving to watch people's reaction to that moment. You know, there was there were so many people who were, you know, just nodding. You know, just 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 sort of engaging with the material, but in a completely personal way and I, I found that incredibly moving in in tandem with the actual material mm, i know and you know we get so many people reaching out and writing letters and there was one lady who had seen the the play in london and said she was moved was crying in the audience the play had enabled her to have conversations with her family about her own sexual assault and felt and then came to the show in broadway and wrote to us and said about how her how her life in the past year had drastically changed. And then she was in the audience in that final moment at a very different point, but surrounded by other women who were having the experience that she had the year before. You know, and I thought there's something so poignant about that and how how it is helping people and 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 what that experience is for people when they're sat watching surrounded by everyone else Mm -hmm. that was really powerful yeah and that's i mean that's something you can only get with you know a sort of theatrical yeah experience yeah is is there a a sort of a small moment in the show or you know a character beat or something that that is most consistently surprising you know to you as you you mentioned that each show is different each show is 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 there is there a moment that you know as time goes on you're like wow different again (laughs) like is there anything like that in the show (laughs) gosh yeah um god the same this <laughs> i think as well because she goes on such a journey mm-hmm. like i feel like emotionally every night is different you know because one one thing triggers another you know it, it, like what happens in one scene dictates how i move into the to the next one so it and sometimes like you know i might get to a moment you know say for instance in the when she's in the havens with the rape and sexual assault unit and she goes to leave when she realizes, you know, she has, I have no control so much at stake. And that's kind of like a climatic moment emotionally. And um, sometimes that may not happen in the way that it has before, but then what that then does is it creates something really interesting at the end. You know what I mean? So I really try and like, because I, I, I think the worst thing you can do is be like, you know, you're like, oh God, I'm supposed to be upset here, but it didn't happen. And then you're in your own head and then you're, and then everything, you know, and then you get in your own way. Whereas now I'm, I really kind of look forward to those surprises of when I can look back and go, oh, I didn't get to that point, but actually what that then created at the end of the play was actually really interesting. And I've never experienced that before. So I don't think I could pin one thing because I do think it's just like it it really is so unpredictable. Is it almost like once you've 
been shot out of that cannon. Uh, it, yeah. It, again, like it is the only way through is to to get to the end. Yeah. Um, and there's really no there's no um, second guessing any second. I actually I'm curious about that. You know, if there's any whatever this is slip up of any kind. Mm-hmm how do you then get back on the tracks? You know, because it's a play like this, it, it seems like you have to get back on the tracks immediately yeah. or else the whole thing tumbles. So if there's any sort of slip up or you know, a moment's hesitation or yeah. anything like that, how, how do you then write the cart? I mean, I think, I think now, cause I have more trust in myself. Like we had a night a couple weeks ago, which was, it, it was actually just became hilarious because the jacket fell off one of the chairs and I was like, when am I going to get that? When am I going to pick that up? So I picked it up. I put it on a chair. I put it on the wrong chair. And then I was like, how am I going to, which was quite like, it was, it would have been not great because it would have been on the chair, which you take to, to use as the bathroom when the assault happens. Um, so it, that would have been, wouldn't have been great. So then I was figuring out, okay, how do I get the jacket off? And then where do I put it so that when the when there's like the kind of mini you know moment after the rain, someone can grab it. I picked up the wrong folder. The folder wouldn't go back in the wall. I forgot to take my coat off. Like <laughs> this was like one night, and we I came off stage, and we were all like, "What the hell was that about?" You know. <laughs> but there was something wonderful about that because it really enabled me to go. I think it's sometimes it's good because then you go right. This is my space. It's not the end of the world. You know, I'm in control of this and it's all, you know, once you have those kind of moments, then you realize, oh, I have permission to like command this space. And like, I had a, I had a moment the other night where after eating the crisp, like a tiny flake got stuck in the back of my throat. I, I, was, I was amazed that you actually ate from the back. I, I, I was like, that is the most dangerous thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Well, the other night I had it and I was like, and I carried it, like, I, I was fine. And then all of a sudden I had like this tiny flake of crisp in my throat. And I was like, ah, oh, and I was like, still, still speaking. And I tried to do a little cough. And then, and then when I got to a point with Julian, um, where she says, you know, we, we go to his room so we can pour his vodka. There is a bottle of water on the table and I just kind of incorporated it. And, and luckily that, um, um, subsided the, dry throat but um but yeah I think because I have more trust in myself now I less like last year in my head I would have been Mm -hmm. panicking you know I feel like last year it took me like the first five minutes to stop my body shaking you know I'd go on stage and I would be literally vibrating so yeah I think there's something about the you know I I I panic less and I'm able to kind of be a bit more rational and (laughs) like think of a way to wait a way to move forward (laughs) Yeah, I mean that—that that is sort of the the magic trick of watching live theater. Is you know I don't know if anyone would have noticed. You know that I I think that people go to see a show and they're like, wow, I can't believe it went off flawlessly. I can't believe they pulled it off flawlessly. Meanwhile, the person on stage is like, wow, I can't exactly, believe I made it. Exactly, <laughs> and I think that's the thing is like the audience will always have a very different experience. Like I, I've you know had moments where I've come off and I've gone, oh, you know, I've been not been felt necessarily satisfied with what I did or something fell off and you know Justin's come around and gone that was brilliant you know and then it's like oh okay. you know it's like the audience experience is always so different will always be so different to what is going on in your own head you know mm-hmm. and like you said all those little things that people may not notice they they may be unaware of and you're kind of hung up on them or over analyzing it you know, and there's moments where things like I remember in in London, like one of the we had the glass was actually glass at one point, and when I was walking on the table, it rolled mm-hmm. off and just like smashed, and I was like carried on, and then like Georgia had to come on, and we had to do a show stop. But there's like there's also like kind of a magic in that, you know, where people feel like, oh God, we've just seen this thing. Or I remember when we shot the NT live, and I knocked the green lamp. And if, if you, I haven't watched the NT live, but I remember it doing it on the table and it was like spinning around on its base for the whole, like when she's dancing and, and if that would have smashed, we would have had to stop, but it's in the thing and it's like, it's slowly mm. like, rolling. 
and I'm sure the audience was like, well, how did they do that? That's yeah, that's exactly, <laughs> exactly. But in my head, I was thinking, oh my God, please God, please God, no, no, no. Um, but yeah, like you said, that's, that's live, it's live theatre. So in terms of character work, you know, you're, you're performing this play eight nights a week and you have a, a however many week run. Do you still feel like you're shading in parts of the character? Like, is it is almost like you're getting to know them every show? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I've, I've had so many moments on this and, and in the rehearsal room, you know, and I, and I think it's also because like, I feel like a different person from this experience. You know, I feel like I've grown up and really, I think probably through Tessa, I've really stepped into my own sense of self and power and belief in myself, um, you know, and as a result of that, she has evolved, you know, and the, it's so interesting how you you have so many moments of going, God, why didn't we think of that last year? You know, it's like you just it's like there's so many more layers that you're kind of unearthing. Um, and yeah, you're just kind of creating more, finding more nuances, I guess, as I am a little bit more relaxed in my own sense of self and I guess ability in a way that affords you more room to play and you know you're not wasting that energy on oh my god can I even can I <laughs> can I do this it's like now it's about yes I can and there's so much more energy to yeah to kind of play around amazing well before we sort of you know wind down here um i did want to ask you one thing because a performance i i really love of yours and that i found very powerful is um the last duel uh yeah. scott's last duel uh a film that i think did not sort of hit like it should have yeah. um i'm curious you know when you put on a performance that strong and you give your all to that does it have any different feel to it when it just doesn't feel like it hits as hard as something like Prima Facie, which people are really, really responding to. Is there any difference in that? Because The Last Tool is something that I think pe more people should have seen and more people should have understood, um, and it just didn't hit like that. Does it feel at all different? Do you know what? It, it, it doesn't in the sense of like, I feel like for me, like, as long as I go into something for, for my own reasons, like with integrity and a clear view of like what it is I am getting from it and what it is that I want to do. I think I feel like it is much easier to then accept when things don't necessarily it doesn't resonate with an audience or, you know, it, it isn't critically acclaimed or people don't think it's good. Like it's 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 much easier to separate myself from that when I know that I did the job one because i believed in it you know i i love the character i was proud of the work that i did do you, do you know what i mean it's like i think if i'd if i'd taken the last duel because it was you know guaranteed to change my life financially and you know what i mean like you know oh you never have to think about anything ever again and then it flopped and i felt like i'd kind of like not been true to myself then i have to live with my own the fact that I haven't been true to myself. And I always felt like with The Last Duel, I was so proud of it. I was so proud of it. So, you know, honored to get to work with Ridley. I'd always wanted to do a period film. Like when I met my agent in London for the first time, I remember, I, you know, saying like, oh, what is it you want to do? And I essentially was just like, I want to be Keira Knightley. <laughs> I think is that what I, what I literally said. And, you know, so that was a huge moment for me personally. So, yeah, I mean, and of course it's so to be a part of something like Primer, which is having this sort of, is resonating in this way, you know, has been nominated and, and won awards. Like it's it's amazing. Of course that's amazing, but I think it's, um, as long as you stay true to yourself, I think it's easier to, yeah, let that kind of thing kind of slide over you. Amazing. Well. Still, if you haven't seen The Last Duel, please go watch The Last Duel. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> thank you, um, Jody, thank you so much for being here. Again, congratulations on you know the show, the nominations, but just the show itself, which was just so, so powerful. Uh, and if you have an opportunity to see the show, go see the show as well. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thanks 
thanks as always to our brilliant producer Jamie Muffet and to the whole team at Backstage, Samantha Sherlock, Mark Stinson, Caitlin Watkins, and of course, Casey Howe. Visit Backstage.com and don't forget you can subscribe to Backstage with code ENVELOPE at checkout for a free trial. 100% free, you simply cannot beat that. For more exclusive content, find us on Facebook and Twitter at In The Envelope and subscribe, share, and leave a comment. Who should we interview next to let us know? Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time for another peek in the envelope.